Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fit Curls. My name is Angela and today I am going to be showing you my foolproof tricks to getting frizz free hair when you diffuse. If you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Go ahead and hit that little notification bell next to that subscribe button if you desire a notification every single time that we post, which is every Friday afternoon. If you wanna see more videos with tips and tricks on techniques like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, which lets me know which direction you want the channel to go, and it helps the channel out a lot. And without further ado, let's get dry it. All you need for this is a hair dryer, ideally a powerful one, and a diffuser attachment. If a diffuser didn't come with your dryer, I will link this collapsible universal one below. Now, whenever I diffuse, I always start on high heat. It won't cause damage, it'll just make this process a lot faster. I'll switch to medium heat when I touch my hair with the dryer, and low heat is a no-no. It just takes forever. Ever, so I skip it. I also will always start on high speed. Now this technique is called hover diffusing. It's relatively self-explanatory. The dryer just hovers around the hair without touching it. First, I start upside down. I start upside down to encourage root volume and I always dry my roots first. They take the longest to dry because they're the lowest porosity hair so they hold on to that water like it is their job. You can hold the dryer in your hand the entire time, or if you're lazy like me, you can place the dryer on the edge of a flat surface like a counter or a bed and just position yourself so the roots are right across from the airflow of the dryer. Now I'm gently moving my head around at different angles the whole time because the way that my hair dries is the way it's going to stay when it is dry. I want lift and movement in my roots, so I'm going to be gently moving my roots around, making sure that they point away from the scalp. Quick rule of thumb, if your hair feels cold to the touch, it's still wet. When I start to really feel the heat from the dryer on my head, I know it's safe to start lightly manipulating my roots a little bit more. So I'll gently push them up with my fingers or the diffuser to add extra volume. By this point in the drying process, I'll stop and do a pinch check. I take two fingers, insert them at different points on my head right at the root area and gently pinch my curl clumps to see if the roots are feeling warm and dry to the touch. If they are, that means that I'm safe to start hovering the diffuser lower towards the mid lengths and ends of my hair. Now just as the roots are the least porous part of your hair shaft, the ends are the most porous. They've been around the longest, they've seen the most damage. So by waiting to concentrate that hot airflow on my ends until the roots are dry, I'm avoiding heat damage and adding time for all of that moisturization to really penetrate the ends of my hair shaft, which gives me way more shine in my finished result. By now, the roots are totally dry and I'm developing a cast, which is a hard shell that forms around my hair from any of the products that I use that provide hold. My curls look and feel stiff and crispy, which believe it or not, is a good sign. That is actually my cue to switch up my diffusing style from hover diffusing to pixie diffusing. I switch my dryer to medium heat and I keep the airflow off as I gently accordion a section of my curls into the diffuser bowl, press them up towards my head, then I switch the dryer on. I hold that section for about five to 10 seconds, and then I'll switch the air back off before removing the diffuser and repeating the process on the next section. Pixie diffusing, or in layman's terms, scrunching with the diffuser, encourages additional volume and shrinkage. So if you prefer a more elongated style, just skip this step. Continue to hover diffuse until your hair is 100% dry. I, however, really like encouraging that extra little lift and bounce in my style, which also helps to show off the shape of my haircut a little bit better, create more differentiation between the layers. But by keeping the airflow off as I'm accordioning my hair into the bowl of the diffuser, accordioning, is that even a word? It is now. 
I'm further reducing the possibility of frizz. That is the exact same reason that I waited until I felt that gel cast around my curls before I started touching them with the diffuser in the first place. When your hair is wet, the number one rule to reduce frizz when you're diffusing is to not touch it, especially with your hands. But until you feel that cast form, your curl pattern hasn't fully set into your hair yet, so it's not safe to touch. As you can see here, after a while of pixie diffusing and then bouncing the diffuser up into my hair, I am checking to see if it's dry. And it appears that it is. So now it's time to scrunch out the crunch. This seals my style in. I'm using this Wella Reflecting Light Oil that I always use. It smells so good. Emulsifying it in between my hands and just giving my hair a nice scrunch, cup, hug, leavens, all that jazz. The serum helps to seal all of that moisture into my curls that I have fought so hard to keep through this diffusing process, but it also helps to break up that hard cast around the outside of my curls, allowing them to soften and grow and spring, taking them from crunchy to bouncy. Now, ideally, you have waited to do this until your hair is 100% dry. That will reduce frizz and it's going to leave you with just healthy, bouncy curls. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> I'm impatient. This never winds up happening for me when I'm actually dry. Somehow, So I have to pick up the diffuser once again. I usually do this on medium heat because yes, this happens to me all the dang time. And this is where I start to get a little bit more adventurous with the diffuser. Usually on high speed, I'll just bounce it up and down into my curls. I'll fluff out the roots a little bit more for some extra volume, but because my curl pattern is set into my hair, I don't have to worry about too much frizz that isn't just functional and for volume's sake. And here is the final result. What do you guys think? For me, this is my absolute foolproof diffusing routine that I use every single time when I wash my hair, no matter what product combo I use. When it comes to diffusing, technique and low manipulation is everything to make sure that you minimize frizz, maximize volume, and overall just give yourself the best wash day and wash week you possibly can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something that will help you in the future. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to click that little thumbs up. Also, you have the option to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below if you've tried any of these techniques yourself or what works best for you when you diffuse. If you decide to try this technique, post a picture on Instagram and tag me at the Fit Curls. You can follow me on Instagram for more content there as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you next Friday. Bye!